Alex, a tight encounter today, um, and it was your first loss of the season, but how do you sum up the game? I uh, missed opportunities and uh, didn't manage the key, the key points in the game that well. Uh, just after scoring, we conceded straight off the bat, uh, which your hands momentum back to Harlequins. And then that passage around the yellow card, uh, they miss a shot at goal. Uh, we then make an interesting decision to kick short, tackle someone in the air, three points, and then concede a, uh, a try during that period as well. Um, so it's just mismanagement of the game and, and a mismanagement of opportunities. And ultimately, against good sides, it costs you. Uh, and, and to be honest, it's, it's been something that's been kind of on the cards we've mismanaged some key areas and key times and got away with it where today there was there was well there was a second chance and we missed the opportunity down in the right hand corner at the end but ultimately uh, yeah we we didn't do what we needed to do to secure a victory so lots of learning opportunities lots of lots of disappointment because it wasn't a case of that game wasn't there but we just didn't we didn't seize the the opportunities and seize momentum when it was there to be grabbed and so you move on next week to Gloucester Hot Parkbury at home. Yeah. What can you take from today that you want to repeat and, and what do you think you can improve on? I think that we got quite a few line breaks. We, when, we, when we were quite direct, we penetrated quite a lot and, and got opportunities of that. I mean, the second score was a very good score, come around the corner, link in and scoring. So that's, that's the kind of thing that is part of our bread and butter, part of our DNA. We you know, get a good go forward, then we can play off the back of that. So certainly that area. Um, I think. Uh, our breakdown work and speed of support still needs to improve and that's that's been a common theme for the last few weeks in all honesty um, so there's I think that the biggest area that's got to improve is our ability to to stick to a, a game plan and execute against it and then if things do start to change then we just got to play a bit more uh, sensible bright rugby and I think we were just a bit guilty of, of being rugby dumb on occasions today um, so, hope, oh sorry, so hopefully going into the cross the Hartbury we can just be a little bit more street smart more game aware and then ultimately execute our core skills better when we've got those opportunities. Um, and in some senses, taking on a side that who are the reigning champions can bring as many issues as taking on a side who are struggling. Um, how, have, how have you found the new role and, and what has been your main challenge as a, a, a new coach at, at the club? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that there's a talented group of players. Um, I think we've just tried to build on, uh, on some of the successes, change the way, uh, change and evolve the way that we wanted to play the game. Um, and probably some of the challenges that if, you've, if you're winning doing certain things that you know justification doing them and, and certainly as I said there are things that are real positives and that we will work on but we need to evolve as a group because if we keep doing the same things ultimately teams will catch us up so that's, that's one of the challenges uh, but uh, yeah it's not a bad place to be when we've got a lot of the talent that we've got in the group and, uh, and the desire to keep on being successful and succeeding so I think you probably saw of the aftermath of this game is that players were straight away how can we how can we look to build on that? So that's that's winning mentality. So that's great to in, inherit that. Um, and ultimately, yeah, the, the, the challenges are probably no different to what every other club coach for, uh, for faces. Is that right, week in week out, we have got to make sure that we're ready to perform. Otherwise, teams will will ultimately come out on top if we don't perform to our standards. And that's that's probably where we have got to keep looking at is just set our standards, live up to them, and, and make sure that we keep a we keep setting benchmarks in training, uh, week in week out in games, and then. By the end of the season, uh, hopefully we'll be in a better place and we'll have evolved from championship winning last season to uh, hopefully champions this year. And you've got seven players selected in England's autumn international squad. This is the biggest representation from any club side, especially with three uncapped players in the, in the team. What does that say about the developmental pathways? Oh, well, I can speak first hand. I've worked with a lot of those youngsters in my previous role and my previous time at Saracen. So it's great that they're, they're coming to fruition and that their, their hard work and talent is, is going to get exposure to at international level. I think you look across the, across the game, the, the, the pathway is producing a lot of young, talented players. Uh, and it's great that we've got so many of them in our ranks. And that experience of exposure to international rugby, international training environments will only help their development, accelerate it. And when they come back to our environment, help accelerate the development of others. So it's fantastic that we've got such a good representation. Um, there's a few of us. I think Lottie Clapp must be uh, hammering on the door pretty hard. Um, and I think uh, probably forcing Scott Beeman to have some fairly tough selection uh, issues around there but that's exactly what he wants and, and certainly we, we want to support all our players with their international aspirations whether that be for England or for Jody Retty up at Scotland uh, as well so yeah international uh, honours and international opportunities certainly drive standards and, and just keep us evolving as a club. And just finally with the full-time contract on the horizon what's your opinion on, on the contract obviously it's a great thing for the women's game but what do you think the impact will be for the top end of, of England women's uh, game? I, 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 
I think it's only positive. Um, you hear some doomsday merchants about it's going to be the death of the club game. Certainly not. The players are going to be in, in the clubs. They're going to get additional support. They'll have the focus on being professional rugby athletes rather than being professional in every other sense rather than it being their full-time job as it is at the moment. So it's, it's a great opportunity. There will be some teething issues and that's where as clubs in the country we need to work together to ensure that we maximise this opportunity because going forward it, it's, it's only going to be good for the game um, and if we get it right straight away then it's going to have immediate impact and we're going to be world leading at club level and international level and that's that's ultimately where we need to get the game to so yeah it's it's positive there will be some challenges there will be some new opportunities but if we positively embrace it work collectively then i'm sure it'll be a it'll be a force for real good in the game